tonight from Columbus, Ohio. It's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. the Columbus Caps taking on Mac Jones and the Denver Broncos. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle with the Denver Broncos. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Columbus ball club entering play. They have certainly got it rolling of late. Winners of six in a row. And it's simple. The more you win in the regular season, the more likely you play at home in the postseason, and that can take you deep into January. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? And no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out to the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game. Bottom line, may not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. Jones. He finds his man complete. It's Peters. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook. Pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? It's a, Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. Throwing Jones. Can't get away, and he's taken down. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. Well, he shot in, C.D., like he was out of a cannon from that linebacker position. And even though they had a running back in the backfield, no one could stop him. Well, you certainly diagnosed that play perfectly because as fast as he got into the backfield, you're exactly right. The running back had no shot to get over and try and protect his quarterback, and a sack resulted. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second half. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense, in this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Looking to throw. Jones toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and express it. Touchdown, Broncos! 
Jerry Judy, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Broncos take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Extra point by Butker is on target, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And at quarterback from the University of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. And they are in rhythm on offense because of him. I mean, right now, he's got everything going the way he wants to, finding the receivers the way he wants to, looking over defenses. No interceptions is the number I lock in on before a touchdown pass isn't so bad either. Yeah, what a game he had last week. On first down, it's Herbert. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. On first and 10, Herbert. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Get up, get up, get up. They'll run on first down. Robbins. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. On third down, it's Robbins. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. They'll try the air now with Herbert. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Morgan. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Buying time to his fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. It's picked up by the Broncos. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They're riding a two-game winning streak into this Thursday nighter. How easy is it when you're on a roll? Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. He's at the 40, 20, and all the way home for a Bronco score. Jerry Judy, 91 yards, and the Broncos able to show off their quick strike ability. Extra point by Butker is on target, and it's now 14 to nothing. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. Over the middle, it's complete. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Herbert. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. To the air again, Herbert. 
Flushed out right. That's complete. Bernard. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Third and two, Herbert. Throwing middle, and it's complete. On first down, Justin Herbert. Throwing it in traffic there, and that's complete. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Touchdown! A great play there. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Caps are back within a score. Brandon Staley telling his troops to stay out there and go for two. And they'll have Herbert try and throw for it toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So unable to throw it in for two. Let me ask you as a fan. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And the focus shifts back to Jerry Judy and his Bronco teammates. We're in the second quarter. He already has two touchdowns. We know how good he is. That's well documented. How do you contain him? We know he's a nightmare. So in this situation, I would go ahead and double him, maybe even have a third person in the area, and try and dissuade them from throwing him the football. Make someone else beat me for a while, because I don't know that their talents are his, because when he gets his hands on the ball, he breaks down my entire D. Someone else, they may not make the same type of a play. Well, we know his talents are very good. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second. They're looking for Judy, but it's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as he'll go for two. After the turnover, here's Herbert. Goes right side, and he's got it. So they went ahead and went for two to tie the game, and it works out. And I guess that makes up for the earlier missed two-point try here to get him to 14. Yeah, that aggressiveness it reminds me a lot of when basketball first adopted the three-point shot. And people were starting to realize that three for two was really starting to work for them. In this case now, maybe the two for one is coming into play in the NFL. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. They'll hand it off now. Williams takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And he will have a Broncos first down as they get five there on third and two. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Three yards the game there, second down. Operating from the gun, Jones. Out quickly to Judy. 
And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Peters. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Seven yards to pick up there. Now that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This one swung out to Williams. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Three yards the game there, second down. Back to throw again. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos have taken the lead. Extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead is now 21-14. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And we'll see what they want to do. Just 20 seconds remaining here before the half. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Herbert on first down now. Looking middle, and that's complete. Now a timeout signal for, and they'll get him with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Herbert now. And a double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 14. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages in the first half. And that's a ball that he is going to want to keep his first career interception in the National Football League. And I love what teams do when that happens. You bring the ball to the sideline, the equipment guy grabs it, he puts a piece of tape on it, writes on it so that you know what it is, and then they tuck it away so that you can have it for later and put it on your mantle. Pretty good deal for him right there. Now he's eager to get back out on the field and get his second one. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. Plenty of good games to choose from in that early window. We'll highlight the one down in Tampa. A big test for the Bucks at home, as that promises to be a tight one. Then in the 4 Eastern window, it'll be a later than usual start in Cleveland, where it'll be the Browns taking on the Washington football team. And one more to highlight, a good one on Monday Night Football between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
A touchdown, the differential, a seven-point game as we get back underway in quarter number three. Fielded just outside the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Justin Herbert leading this unit out for their next possession. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. And he's got his big tight end here. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Justin Herbert looking to pass. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Herbert back to the air. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end. Complete. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Steps away to his left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Good positioning, and it's picked off. It's a foot race. The 40. Pass the 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. Well, dare I say it, it's kind of quid pro quo. Both defenses now with an interception return for a touchdown. Your vocabulary, sir. Well done. An extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead now up to 14. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded just outside the goal line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Herbert wants to throw it on third and one. Flush to his right. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback, because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open? And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. His second rushing touchdown on the campaign and fourth overall. And the Cavs have cut it back within a score. Brandon Staley telling his troops to stay out there and go for two. They'll look to throw. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone. And that cuts the lead a bit further. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. 
it's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now and hear him calling for it? Give me that one. Give me that one. Give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown. As the pressure comes and down he goes. Ochina Nuosu. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Now then after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. From the gun, Jones. And that is incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. 49-yard punt, five on the return. Columbus's offense just about ready to go again. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, you, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Here's Herbert. Finding some room at midfield. And he's got it across the 50 to the 47-yard line. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. On second and very short. Herbert escaping the pressure right. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now it's Herbert. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Now here's a throw that's complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Herbert operating from the red zone. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Cavs are an extra point away from capturing the lead.
Michael Badgley on for the extra point. And with that, his guys take the lead here by a point. Five plays there on that drive. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. Pulls it in at the 13. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and ten. From the gun, they'll try to run it. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Back to throw. Jones. Throw left side complete. That's Ballard. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Got a man, it's Judy complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Operating from the gun, Jones. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Peters. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Another try after the first down sack. Jones throwing the out route incomplete. It's Peters. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. He lost two, and it brings up four. Butker's kick here is good. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute, they want their opportunity, and he seized his. Columbus's offense just about ready to go again. 
And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Eluding the pressure right, and his pass incomplete. These two teams met up earlier in the year, back in week four, and it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. And Herbert going to slide to a stop, and he has a first down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On first down, Swan. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it was really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. It's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Herbert. Over the middle, it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the night. And the Caps are able to move back in front. And touchdown and congratulations and zero relaxation ahead of them, right? Way too much time on the clock for them to start celebrating. Yeah, part one is done, but now on the sideline, you can already see them scrambling down there. They're getting those defensive guys ready. Yes, you have to get those guys ready, and you also have to talk to your special teams guys. Make sure the kickoff is exactly what you want and cover it well. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So the Broncos now down by six, a minute seven remaining. They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. And the drive starts with a completion, left side. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. To throw is Jones. He finds his man, complete. It's battle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Now Jones. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Jones. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. On third down, Ballard. 
across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Here's Jones. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It got his man complete. And he is in as they have tied it late here in the final minute of the fourth quarter. The dramatic score to tie it, and now they just need the PAT to get the lead late fourth quarter. So much for the touchdown maker. It's all about the extra point <laughs> attempter. And I can't wait to see how this one turns out. A very important extra point there, up and good. And that is going to put them on top by a point, and it sets us up for quite a finish. Taken in at the three. Now the return. Oh, no, the ball is loose. The Broncos say they have it. They do. So problems there on the return. a Denver victory and I tell you these division games never for the faint of heart but they come through with a tight victory here on the road and you find yourself working harder in a game like this too don't you yeah, because ball, you gotta stay sweat. with it right you gotta stay with it you gotta stay locked in it's our type of a game and you just mentioned it division game on the road tight and they find a way to win it way to hunker down as Mo Kirch used to say and find your way through so for Denver they